What's poppin' Palaxy? Today on the Bounty Board, we catch up with Tommy and he gives us his thoughts on Loki and the Marvels and then we switch gears and go into what we love about every Phase 4 Marvel project. So kick up that warp drive and let's punch it, gang! Welcome back to the Guardians of the Palaxy podcast, everybody! What's going on? My name is MT and I'm here with my wonderful friends, Whitney Van Lenningham and Tommy Bechtold. What's going on, gang? Hi! Hi, Tommy's back, bitch. Tommy's back. Let's go. The birthday boy has returned. We missed, missed you. you oh my uh, gosh. I, How was your trip? How was everything? Yes. Trip was wonderful. I'm still in my mom's room because I've been too sick to fly back. It's been, oh, I got, boy. my birthday was so ill that I got <laughs> sick. Oh no. That you but got it was ill. Great. Nice. But it was very oh. fun. I got to spend a lot of time with family. But Whitney, we're going to celebrate this week. It's going to be sick. Oh, oh wow. Wow, nice. Ill and sick. I still have a birthday present for Tommy. He already knows what it is because I'm one of those people where, like, if I know what your birthday present is and it's not coming mm. in the mail for a while, I have mm. to tell you what it is on your birthday. Mm. So I got us I got us friendship necklaces, like the old school kind. Aww. Where it's like, it's like the little hearts and one says best and one says friends. <laughs> so I got him that. <laughs> I can't that is wait. so sweet. I love that. I'm very I can't excited wait. about it. It's Me a good too. present, dude. I'm so glad you're back on the podcast. We missed you so much. It's gonna be so. Me too. And, I, and, and fe- fear not, I've been ingesting co- just as quickly as Nyquil. I've been ingesting content, so I'm ready to Hell talk. Hell yeah, dog! <laughs> Hell yeah, baby! Content like Loki and the Marvels. I hope. Oh, you better believe I'm ready to talk Loki. I'm ready to talk the Marvels. Believe it or not. I'm so ashamed to say this. I saw the Marvels three hours ago. Oh my really? gosh. Wow. Fresh. Oh, okay. that is like, that is extra fresh. I haven't I got, seen it in two weeks. Well, Damn. Here's, here's my thought. <laughs> I have my old responsible tea. There was no one at the 10 a.m. screening at my local theater. And I said, okay, I can mask up, go to the screening and not get anyone sick. So I watched the Marvels. And this is not an indictment on the Marvels. It's 10 a.m. on a Sunday, you jabronis. Who the hell's going to a movie at that time? alcoholics and people who haven't slept yet and me yeah <laughs> it's thanksgiving weekend on a <laughs> sunday morning on a sunday morning but it, uh, yes but i did just i have just seen it i it's all fresh in my head hey then you are ready for this conversation you better you are it. you are heckin ready i saw wish on wednesday Oh, and yeah, you did. I, saw I also saw that at a weird time of day because like Brett and I were just like oh yeah because we had stayed up all night the night before because Brett had a Chuck E. Cheese script due for <laughs> So I was just up with him watching history of Chuck E. Cheese videos on YouTube <laughs> until like five yeah. in the morning. So oh my I think god, we me woke, too. Just kidding. <laughs> we like we woke up at some weird time and decided to go see Wish. And we were also the only people in the theater. So it is definitely like a Thanksgiving holiday situation. Oh yeah. That's so sweet though. Can we get a quick uh two sentence review of Wish for the for the fans? Yes. Quick two sentence review. I uh, I enjoyed Wish. It was a movie. Um, this is how you know I'm not a Disney shell because I'm not going to gush <laughs> over this one. It was yeah. it was a movie. I didn't hate it. I thought it was really disjointed and the pacing was super weird and I could not. Mm. Let, I, it was just like very bizarre pacing for, for me. Um, but the characters were all great. Chris Pine was amazing. And it's a really cool lore world. I, it just felt like Shrek without any... Uh, without any dick jokes to me. Mm. And Ooh, that, what's the you know, point? It felt like it felt like Nimona without the pacing because the villain was like pretty much the same as the villain in Nimona. So it was mm. Nimona without the good pacing, and then it was Shrek without the dick jokes. And I was just mm. like, eh, but there's two movies out there that do this better. I don't think I need to watch this movie again. It was fine. <laughs> it wasn't horrible. Whitney, you just passed the Bechtold test. The Bechtold <laughs> test is when uh, someone asks me to give a two sentence review and I give them a 200 sentence review. Yeah, the Bechtold <laughs> test. Okay, I'm so sorry. No, that's why we're best friends, Whitney, because I, know, I, knew, really I, I, knew, I knew putting those ramifications on you was unfair and unnecessary. <laughs> but I want to talk. I want to first talk. I want to talk about the Marvels. I'm sorry I went off. Let's talk Marvels. But for, okay, so what, what, what do you guys want to talk about first? Loki or Marvels because I probably have more to say about Marvels. Loki has been talked to death, but I do, you know, I I, I feel like uh, for me, my opinion in Loki, uh, it, it, the finale uh, stuck the landing hard. The it's a great, great, great two set. I don't think we need a third season of it at all. 
I think God of Stories uh, is perfect. Uh, the way he used, the way he finally became a god again and used his powers and wove together his own time loom, his own personal tree, tree of life, Xandril or whatever it's called. Yggdrasil. Hell. Uh, I love that. Re Justice for Renslayer. Why are we still here? Come on, that was a cop out of me. For, uh, <laughs> yeah, ju ju justice for justice for you know I'm you know I'm Gaga for Goo Goo, so I'm obviously gonna be pissed it's true. about. She's such a great actress. She's so great, and I hate that that was. I I, I get it, but I I, I think there's I, I guess there's more to be gleaned from what happened, and perhaps her character is more of an open uh, ended thing, and maybe maybe perhaps the only character besides he who remains who has legs beyond the Loki show. I don't know. I don't know. I hope not. Uh, but I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a great second season. Um, I thought the way it, it tied up was, was great. There were no unnecessary cameos to, to excite us. It didn't need them. It harkened back to the old days of, of an Iron Man one where you do get a post credit scene, but the movie is the thing you're like, wow. Right. Yeah. This is Marvel Hell comics yeah. are on the screen. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, needed. Wish we could have seen John Mobius, Don, whatever, on a uh, jet ski in real life in the water. But I, I will know. take. Check off <laughs> jet ski, man. Yeah. I keep saying that. Yeah. That was also my my only real problem with it. I yeah. wait. Did we get B roll of him on the, a jet ski in a trailer or something? Am I making that up? No, he was on the fake jet ski with the wind blowing his hair in the store. Oh, right. Yeah, in the store. Yeah. But it was just yeah. the store background. And I'm like, that is, I think that that is the dirtiest any MCU character has ever yeah. been done. Forget Renslayer, Justice for Dawn. I think they're saying for a Namor movie um, when he's just on a jet ski yes. and go visit Namor. What if, what if, what if he actually oh, saw us, he, he <laughs> saws a, a, tello, a tello Kinesian in half with his jet ski and then it's like <gasps> And then wages the, war the, on the, the telecon. The telecon. Tele oh. uh, no, uh, yeah. So, and then just some quick thoughts uh, before we get on to the Marvels, which is what I, you know, is fresher in my head. Uh, I loved OB, obviously, an MVP I loved getting to know the character of Casey more. I felt like Casey probably got the most cutting room floor treatment in season one because the actor Eugene Cordero was listed as a series regular in the credits and really only had two or three moments that were like even would be considered scenes, I would say. And maybe I'm just misremembering, but it felt like he was three dimensional in a big way. Hunter B15, mm -hmm. uh, she was incredible. Finding out she was a, a pediatrician was was amazing. The the contrast of her being so intimidating looking and so sweet and so caring, I loved, and and having so much empathy. I thought her character, I thought her performance was phenomenal. Um, I wish we could have gotten a little more. Uh, I know we heard something about Brad Wolf, or we, there's like a there's like a thing that so we know we know Bradley gets back into his starring roles somehow. Somehow that character All gets right. gets his for happily forever after. But get it, bro. If anyone's gonna spare a complicated man, it's gonna be Loki, right? If anyone like if any if anyone if if anyone's gonna be allowed to crush their surrogate mother uh, in a cube and then. Uh, <laughs> And then get to go back and be Bradley Wolf. It's going to be uh, Loki's going to be the one that oversees that. So, so yeah. Uh, overall, uh, it, it's definitely an A for me series, an A top tier Marvel uh, series. I think that goes without saying. Uh, this season is a top, I think, top three season of Marvel TV for me in general. Anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, as you can tell, I, I loved it. Hell yeah! Hell like yeah, it, brother! Bro. Dude, like I so agree with you on Bradley Wolf, like. Cause like he's like he's the, obviously the Thor villain Zaniac. He's an adaptation of that. So like there is potential that we could see him in a future like maybe a, like the next Thor movie. Like please put him in there just as a random supporting character. Like I just want more of that actor. He's so good. He's such a. I was blown away. I, I was not expecting him to be like probably my favorite character outside of like I think he's my favorite character in Loki. Like honestly, cool. like he's just Damn. so good. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, no, no. Thank you, Tommy. Like those are that's very insightful thoughts on Loki. What do you think about the Marvels, man? The yeah. Marvels, baby. Well, let's just say the best way to see a Marvel movie is three weeks after its release, after every <laughs> single person on Earth has waited 
Needless to say, my expectations for the Marvels, despite all of the backlash or the hype, it was was very tempered, right? Like I'm going in to see a movie that I, A, have seen, there was so much uh, trailer content for, all of the post credit scenes have been spoiled for me. So I was like, eh, none of that was surprising. That being said, uh, um, Iman Vellani needs to be carrying this franchise. She needs to Hell be yeah. one of the pillars. Absolutely. She Young Avengers, uh, baby. Young Let's Avengers, go. phenomenal. But you know what? Just Avengers, as Kate Bishop correctly puts, MT. I'm 23. You know, I thought that was a great line, actually. Like, because it's kind of like she spoke for the voice of the internet there, where everyone's like, they can't make Young Avengers. These are all adult actors now. It's like, blah, blah, blah. But here's one thing I want to particularly point out in the Monvalani's performance the way she approaches Ms. Marvel is a way that I think is missing from these superstars that get cast in these roles. Even my beloved Brie Larson, who plays Carol Danvers, who I think does a phenomenal job. Iman Vellani plays it the way the first time we saw Chris Hemsworth, who had been in Star Trek, but was not a superstar, approached Thor. There is humor, but there is also, there's a lot of weight to the power that is bestowed upon them. And I mean, for Chris Hemsworth to do it with Thor is interesting because he's this like mythological figure, but you could see that this was not a person who was playing the character. This was a person who kind of became the character. And yeah. I felt the same way with Iman Vellani. She becomes Miss Marvel. All of when she needs to be serious, she's serious and you believe her when she's being a teenage girl, she's delivering those lines perfectly and you believe her. And there's no, there's no like, Oh wow. That's a famous person playing this person. It's like, wow, this is Ms. Marvel and she is pitch perfect. And I really, I think that's really hard to do. And I think when the famous people, I think Chris Evans kind of did pull it off as Captain America, despite being Chris Evans. And I, I, I but I, I think that there have been other cases in both DC and the MCU as of more recent, where it does feel like it's a superstar taking on a superstar character. Right. So I really want to give special uh, recognition in my opinion, in the review to Iman Vellani. I know that's not a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> hot take. I also think Monica Rambo did a great, the woman who played Monica Rambo. Uh, oh yes. Tayona Paris. Uh, Tayona Paris. I think that character could have been the wet blanket of the film, right? She's got a beef with Carol Danvers. Mm. She's got a huge issue with her abandonment. You know, she feels let down. She, she, you know, you, you, it's probably some irrational part of her blames her mother's death on Carol, whether like, it's like Carol could have saved her. if She had been around, whatever that could have been a long lasting thing in the film where it's like, Oh, uh, Monica Rambo doesn't like, um, doesn't like Captain Marvel. But instead, it's played very kind of realistically the way a family would play it, as they're supposed to be family members, in that she's never going to abandon her. She's never not going to do the right thing. She's just hurt. And then that has to be dealt with. And I thought it was dealt with in, in a movie about three people that have incredible powers. It was dealt in a, within a very realistic way. So I also very much enjoyed that. Now... The villain didn't move the needle for me that much. I kind of yeah. felt like the villain was a, yet another superhero movie where we have a placeholder villain that just wants to do something destructive, stop them from doing the destructive thing. There has to be a great sacrifice to stop them from doing the great destructive thing. I it wasn't anything wrong with her performance. I just think that they didn't that. I mean, this was one of those movies where I know it was short and that was like, that was like one of the things like this is the shortest movie I could have maybe used 15 more minutes in this movie of like mm. fleshing it out a little bit more because it was kind of an incomplete gripe that she had. They call Captain Marvel the Annihilator. We see her point of view, the unreliable narrator. We see Durbin's uh, POV of the day Captain Marvel took out Supreme Intelligence. So... We see the day that that happened from Darben's point of view, and it does make it seem like Captain Marvel is this evil, evil person. But we never get the juxtaposition of that. We never see really Captain Marvel's version of it, right? Like we don't, uh, to my knowledge, like there's not like, like in, in in that flashback, it shows Captain Marvel like knocking Darben out. Like it's like I just feel like they they had unresolved things that kind of got ham fisted at the end. Uh, but overall. I think the need to complain about this movie is absolutely insane. It's fine. I, in fact, I'd say it's better than fine. It's fun. It's enjoyable. The performances are great. 
Samuel L. Jackson is back to being the Samuel L. Jackson. We probably all wanted him to be in Secret Invasion. Uh, the family, the yeah, the Khan family is very funny. Justice for Bruno. Where is Bruno? Why is oh, Bruno? Yeah, where the hell Bruno? was Bruno? I totally forgot about Bruno. Didn't he go to like that summer camp? Yeah, he's at he's at like Cal Poly, right? Or, or, he's at Caltech. 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 Yeah. That's what. Cal Poly, he went to go get a farming degree at Cal yes. Poly. With all those <laughs> I hope cars. so. I hope he's working out ways to homogenize milk. He's inventing the next Jamba Juice. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> MT, just in case you don't know, there's a college that's like in, uh, it's in like mid California called Cal Poly, and that's where that's where Jamba Juice was invented. Your Zoe 101 land type stuff. I see. Yes. And it's primarily <laughs> like a farming and agriculture school. Yeah. So you, it's oh. like, it's very bizarre. So it's literally all of the hippie burnouts from your high school, but it's still like a really good school. It is. So it's like, school. it's like the smart stoners go there. Yeah. I heard uh, old McDonald graduated from there. Um, he sure did. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> Ronald McDonald, the whole McDonald family are alumni, actually. They donate to the fund <laughs> each year. I like it. Michael McDonald, too. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. He was like, yeah, old McDonald was actually my uh, great grandfather. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's my thoughts. Uh, I, I, I think it is a perfectly fine Marvel movie that I had a great time watching. Uh, shout out to the CGI on beast. My God, he looked, looked good. So in my opinion, good. he looked incredible. Uh, I love that. I love Monica being in a different, uh, a different u- parallel universe. I think that's amazing, uh, and being reunited with a variant of her mother. That was incredible. Loved that. So yeah, that's what I got for you guys. I hope that uh, I hope that wets your whistles, pals, palaxy, pal- palaxians. <laughs> oh no! Cons- I was about to say something real. <laughs> I was about to say consider my whistle wet. But should that, <laughs> shouldn't that be on the internet? I don't know. It's too late I now. Don't know. <laughs> Clip that out. That's the thumbnail. It's gonna be empty like this. Yeah. <laughs> My whistle is wet. Consider this whistle wet. <laughs> Perfect. Tommy wet my whistle on a Saturday. I, I feel like I just I just a book report. I was like, and that's what I did on my summer vacation. That is what you did, but it was your Thomas vacation. That was like so like all those thoughts were really like smart and concise. And um, very well put together. So thank you, Tommy. Very unexpected from me, but I did it. <laughs> you wrapped it up a lot more concisely. MT and I got stuck on how Darben's whole stealing resources from other planets is just like a total Rick and Morty move. And then we just spent like <laughs> we spent like 10 minutes just doing Rick and Morty voices as if they were stealing. <laughs> so, so don't worry about it. You did a lot better than we did. We devolved into weird voices on the last episode. I think we, we did like several different voice segments. It was great. I had a nice time. This is what happens when you let us alone, Tommy. We just do. We need weird you to watch us, Tommy. Time. What are you doing? We need you to watch over <laughs> us. All right. Fear, fear not. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> But no, um, just like a random thought about all that, because like you did mention, you know, Monica being in another universe, we're seeing a like a, that being a trend in the MCU, or at least like, you know, because like in What If, right, the Watcher ends up leaving uh, Black Widow from like the shitty Ultron universe into this new universe. And like now we have Monica in this other universe. And like, it just seems like there's a lot of sh- like shuffling going around. And like, that's not good. Like apparently, like, according to... um. Reed Richards from Multiverse of Madness, because he's like, yo, the longer you're here, Doctor Strange, the more of a mark that you leave on this universe, which could cause an incursion. Incursions are bad, but Monica can fix them. Mo- well, like Monica can fix a crack, but I don't know if she can fix an incursion. That seems like a, mm. that seems like I way think, above Monica's pay I think pay that grade. she just needs to get a bunch of me-seeks that can do what she does. <laughs> and then she just sends a me-seeks to every single crack. She just gives all the me-seeks her powers. Yeah, exactly. Yes. She bestows the me-seeks with her powers and then she's just like, go fix all the incursions so that mommy can multiverse hop. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy's got places to be. Mommy's got multiverse hopping to do. I like it. But no, I, I, just, I can, like that, I feel like gives more credence to like everyone wants a, an Avengers versus x-men type scenario because like that was like a big comic series in the past and like it just seems like the way that marvel studios should go because like you know marvel studios has been struggling with like you know with viewership and all that so like doing avengers versus x-men seems like the more logical step um but like even if that doesn't happen 
there's a big chance that like you know these two universes do collide and like we do have a um uh an incursion type scenario because monica is there because monica should not be there and like there's something about you being in the wrong universe that causes um universes to kiss Mwah. and uh <laughs> kiss and start explode. to merge it's gonna explode big explosion so i would love to see the avengers versus x-men fight to destroy each other's planets Hugh Jackman's Logan would kill Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Oh, yes. Like, he does not stand a gash dang chance. I know that no one knows he's <laughs> Spider-Man, so he's like a little bit safe. But like, I'm sorry, after watching Logan and then after watching the you know, the the home trilogy, as we as we call it here in the galaxy. I just made that up. <laughs> we call it the home thing. trilogy. Uh, we do. We do that's home. what it's called. It's true. It's what it's always been called. I just really think that that kid would fucking die. That kid would mm. die if they got. In a I fight. mean, like, oh, you know, I don't know. Cause it would be quite the fight. Cause like after watching Tom Holland fight Green Goblin in No Way Home, like they, they were scrapping. Like, and Green Goblin is a strong ass motherfucker. But Toby <laughs> got stabbed. I think that that would happen to Peter True. again. I think it would just True. be a different stabbing. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Six times more than stabbing. Yeah. It's true. I mean, like, it's hard to kill Wolverine. It's really hard. <laughs> and, like, even, like, Spider-Man doesn't even, like, kill. But, like, can you imagine trying to wrap up the claw, like, adamantium claws with his spider web? Like, I know that that shit is strong. I do. But the adamantium i don't know i don't know if if we're doing if we're doing like a rock paper scissors thing it's definitely like adamantium spider web you know like i feel like one i feel like one could cut the other or maybe one could cover the other i don't know let me know in the comments who'd win tom holland it's definitely adamantium or adamantium Adamantium or one flippy boy (laughs) one flippy floppy boy flippy boy flippy boy (laughs) Now, I think it's time for our fake ads, gang. We do want to do some fake oh, ads. Yeah! yeah fake yeah. ads, fake ads. All Where's right. the dice? Just give us the D20. Do or dice, baby. Do it. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Got the guy. Let's roll the die. I'm going to do a <laughs> quick ad for Starbucks here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ice chai latte. The center of my life. I rolled an eight, which is street smart. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then a four, which is street smart condoms, baby. Oh. Today we're selling street smart condoms. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. I think that uh, I think because it's Tommy's first day back in a while, we let Tommy take it away from the top. We want to thank our sponsors over at Wanks. <laughs> Wanks Prophylactics. Are you sick of all those bookish? Aristotle, Socrates <laughs> level prophylactics in your life. Well, go to Wax. These are the condoms for the streets. <laughs> for the streets, from the streets. <laughs> Anonymous. But Anonymous. Safe. But safe. Anonymous, but safe. <laughs> Dangerous encounters in a safe way. You're not going to learn this in your Ivy League. You're going to learn this in your spy, Spidey Creeks on the streets. Yeah. They don't teach you about street smart condoms at Harvard. No, you learn about them from your older cousin, Mike, who told you about them one time. Exactly. That's, that's street smart condoms. Word of mouth. Like word we shouldn't even only. be doing it ads, honestly, but like they no, just told us we it's are okay. because we're doing word of mouth. This is it's word true. of mouth. This is street smart as hell. We're street smart. We're not book smart. We're not life smart. We're street smart condom. There's no promo code for wanks. You just find someone on the street that looks like they're down. And you say, you got wanks? And if they do, they'll give them to you. Still tell them the pals you sent you because we want the referral fee. Yeah, so. we want them. Yeah. Every time every time you tell a guy on the street that you need to borrow a wanks condom, one of us gets our angel wings. That's, That's right. That's bad promises. So, so use wanks. Quit reading books. And start giving looks. Wank. <laughs> Wank off Wank. today, everyone. Wank. Wank. <laughs> that was excellent, Tommy. Ten out of ten. That was perfect. Well, thank you. You're perfect. like an improv. I don't know how you do it, but like you're like an well, improv king. Like I, you're have, literally... I have the best partners. That's why. Uh, so uh, let's move on to part two. As my throat, my throat is like the uh, exhaust port in the Death Star. It's, it's getting narrow. Oh no! Fast. We've got a two oh, by two. No. We oh, must no. finish the podcast before I 
go Dad. take my Nyqu- my Nyquil and and rest. But yeah, guys, to continue this video, I thought it'd be fun if we just went through like all of Phase Four and just talked about like what we were like what we liked about Phase Four about those projects, just to like put a positive spin on like a lot of the negativity that we're seeing on the internet because like. It's easy to be negative, but like there were a re- there were really a lot of great stuff about um, all the projects that we got because we got a lot of projects. We have been so spoiled. There's like a billion actually. Like when it's all listed out like this uh, for the for the the viewers at home, MT made a huge ass list in a little document for us, and I like looking at it. I'm like, oh, sh- I didn't even. Holy shit, that's a lot of stuff that has come right? out. Like that you I like you just don't think about it until you like visually see it and you're like, "Oh, dear god, that is a lot of." Right. We were like before like we were getting like two movies a year and now we're getting like a zillion projects a minute and like it's I I feel like we're, we're not going to be living in such like a a a beautiful beautifully lit MCU time like this again cuz like I feel like Bob Iger's going to like slow down production on this stuff and like er, this is like a golden age for me. But anyway, Let's run down this list and like just talk about real quick about the things that we liked, starting with WandaVision. Whitney, I know Whitney likes WandaVision. What were your favorite parts about WandaVision, Whitney? It's my whole life. I had uh, uh, the I had a quote from WandaVision in my fucking vows at my wedding. I like I am like obsessed with it. Um, Yeah, the thing that the thing that I put in my vows and my favorite part of the show that I know both of you have heard me say a thousand times because I've said it on uh, podcasts a lot, but. Uh, my favorite line from it isn't the, like, what is grief if not love persevering? My favorite line is who knows what I'll be next. And I just thought that that was like the most beautiful thing that you can say to a person that you are in love with is like agreeing to like love that person, no matter what comes next. And even if you don't know what comes next, you know, that you'll still find them like again in any like life because he's he's dying he's dying he's he might not be back for a while but he's like who's who knows what i'll be next i can anytime i'm anything that i'm doing next i'll always find my way back to you kind of a thing and i thought that was like the most beautiful sentiment from any tv show i loved it i thought it was great and funny and fun all the depression uh antidepressant commercials really got me dude wandavision <laughs> was like the first fake ads if you think about it that's WandaVision... true the first fake ads of the mcu yeah dude <laughs> wandavision did it first i love all that what What are you tommy what do you like about wandavision For me you know it's all about my girl katherine hahn and agatha i love the character of agnes revealed to be Agatha. And I love those few weeks where we were wondering what the hell was going on with Ralph Boner before we knew it was Ralph Boner. When Evan Peters came back and we're like, oh my God, is this like, is this happening? Is this really happening? What is this, a crossover episode? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, uh, Agatha, obviously, uh, the Agnes, the, the character that uh, launched a spinoff uh, for me. What about you, MT? Oh, no, like, I agree, like, with both of you guys. You guys raised some amazing points. I, I mainly like the, the you know, what is grief part for me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a basic bitch Oh, my here. gosh. Um, no, I mean, it's gorgeous, <laughs> too. I love it, too. Yeah. Like, that was, like, such an impactful line for me. I was like, oh, my God. Because, like, you know, I was going through my own type of grief at the time. And, like, it just felt so, like, One Vision just felt like a hug, like, that we all needed as, like, a as humanity. Because we're all going through, like, the COVID stuff. And, like, so many people were dying uh, from COVID. And so like, you know, it just felt like a very comforting show for everyone to experience. So I just like that, you know, how like it just related to people on a human level. Yeah. When we needed it the most, literally, it right. was like the time that all of us needed it most. Yeah, for sure. Like my favorite Marvel projects are when are the ones that connect with people like on an emotional level, which is why like, you know, the Guardians movies are incredible. And like, I feel like WandaVision had that very same um, type of thing. Um, yeah. But anyway, moving on. Falcon Winter Soldier, who wants to take that one? I'll t- I'll take it because I like that in that the Winter Soldier admits to being a Tolkien nerd. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but that I like that for that that validated him so much more in my eyes when he's like, I read Tolkien. <laughs> he was like, I was first in line when it came out. I, I was right. re- <laughs> I read the first <laughs> copy. I liked that Bucky Barnes was doing his research on my favorite band, Nirvana. 
I like finding that out. Sorry, I know we said that we'd each do it, but I have to say, Whitney, Whitney immediately broke the rules. I immediately <laughs> broke the rules, and I'm really sorry. No, 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 no. Those are all great things about it. I, I need to rewatch that show. I freaking, I really like that show a lot. Um, Loki, of course, Loki season one. But like, I guess we could talk about both because like, we're just talking about Loki. I mean, just briefly, just like, obviously, like, the time travel element, like getting to see the TVA. I, I have been a huge TVA stan since before people knew what the TVA was. Like, I freaking love the TVA. OG TVA. <laughs> but no, the way it was handled, it's just like, it was just so cool to just see how like the, like that there was structure to the MCU multiverse and, and the timeline in general. So like Loki, top tier MCU series for me. Um, but yeah, Black Widow. I know this was a controversial one for a lot of people. David Harbour was incredible. Uh, David Harbour and, and uh, uh, what's her name? Rachel Weiss. Uh, love yes. them both. Yeah. Still think still think Rachel Weiss deserved a little more development, but I love them both. That movie also opened with a Nirvana song, and I really liked that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any Nirvana inclusion gets an A plus. Listen, from it's, been, it's been my favorite band since I was four years old. No lie. And uh, yeah. Sorry, nice. That's not surprising. I love that about you. Yo, what if, bro, I could talk about what if for fucking days. It's probably one of my like top three new Marvel TV shows. Like this, like the, the sheer scope for what they can do. And like the, like the, the stuff that they did in season one, I just like that. It's like, just like all these MCU actors coming back to have fun with like random scenarios that like we could not possibly see in live action because of the restraints of like, you know budget and all that stuff and like you can't really do experimental stuff like this um when contracts are involved um but yeah like i just think that what if is like i hope they never stop doing it like i just think that there's so much potential for that series it seriously has the possibility to be infinite like fucking sign me up dog sign me up for 90 seasons as long as the quality doesn't slip <laughs> yes as, as long, long as, as, the quality not slip. as long as they they put a lot of energy and effort and they pay people fairly to do it i'm in yes, i'm in the for hey, need all the what time a novel to idea what a novel idea <laughs> switching it up oh my god i can't believe that i'm the first person to invent that crazy right fair pay what write that down write that down write that down write that down i do want to see a crossover between the spider verse and what if I'm down the line. Ah, yes. Yes. I feel like that's inevitable. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I did not even think about that. Holy shit. Yes. 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 Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh, baby. That movie is my jam. I think that I've... I rewatched Shang-Chi probably the most out of any of the recent Marvel movies. I put that on in the background for, like, when I'm doing dishes and stuff. Because I don't... I just love it. I think it's so funny. And I... I really like the big dragon boy at the end. Mm. <laughs> yes. Boy. I really, I really, I, I really dig the house. Shang-Chi was like a, a, a secret multiverse movie, but like they didn't tell anybody because Talo is in another universe. And her, his aunt says that. So like, it's basically a multiverse movie. Uh, but yeah, no, I really liked all the dragon stuff. I want to see more dragon stuff in the future. I wonder what that post credit scene is going to be like. So. I, I want more Shang-Chi. And Shang-Chi has my favorite Marvel bus crash scene out of all the Marvel bus crashes. <laughs> we get we get a Marvel bus crash at least like eight times a phase. Like it's I think true. that they have like a quota that they have to do. They have to fill the bus crash quota. And in my opinion, no one does it better than Shang-Chi. So. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. It's not a Marvel movie without a bus crash. But no, Eternals. That This one has been like, you know, obviously a lot of people had their own opinions about Eternals. I love Eternals a lot personally but like does anybody else have a uh, opinion on these girls well i think it was uh america the american mainstream cinema's introduction to ultimate weird boy punk barry killen uh yeah because like he'd been in like green knight and a couple of other things that were like always playing a big old weirdo or cute little weirdo however you want to describe <laughs> him but like it's like oh man there's something about that guy he's weird and engaging and then <laughs> Boom, Eternals. He comes in and we're like, oh, right, that's why. He's, he's good. He's good. He's brooding. He's angry. He's also a little bit mischievous. I don't know why I'm feeling these feelings for him. What does this mean? <laughs> uh, so, Plus, uh, honestly, yeah. after after the Marvels, I really think we need a Kingo and uh, Captain Marvel Bollywood movie together. Absolutely. Mm. And that would be tight as hell. But no, I really like like the the, the overall symbolic of nature of Eternals a lot, like the deeper meanings behind like um, just compassion and love for like, and like the the goodness for the human race. I feel like that's 
like I like how it was a celebration of all that. Uh, but Hawkeye, oh my goodness, the greatest TV show ever made. Yeah. MT, take it away. Listen, buddy. it came out on Christmas. It was a Christmas show. There was a dog. There was Haley Steinfeld. There was Haley Steinfeld. And there was Haley Steinfeld. It was just so incredible. Like, it was just funny. And, like, the Matt Fraction run of Hawkeye was, is, like, my favorite um, piece of Marvel media in, like, such a long time, like, in forever. And so, like, seeing that adapted, like, fairly well with, like, I didn't, like, personally, I didn't think that, um, Jeremy Renner could pull it off because I was like, oh, this he's a different Hawkeye than what we get in the comics, but like he did it. And like I love his dynamic with um with Kate Bishop. And um it's just top tier Marvel show, 10 out of 10. I want a season two. Um, and she needs to be in charge of the young Avengers. I agree. I'm with you. Hell yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home. I know it's a little uh little, little uh, uh what do you call it? Indie film. Uh no yeah, one really it's saw a little it. Indie film that hardly <laughs> anybody has ever heard of. Um at- Spider-Man ever heard of him? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I mean, we've probably talked this movie to death. I'm going to bring up one thing that I like. I like any vehicle that allows Happy Hogan to emote and, and go through various ranges of emotions. I think Happy Hogan is one of those tertiary Marvel characters that, like, doesn't really ever get their due. You know, they're kind of always, like, they're rock solid. They're a friend. They're usually used in movies as uh, someone to kill off when the stakes are need to be heightened to a to a ten out of ten, uh, I liked watching. I liked watching him grieve Aunt May. No, I liked that <laughs> we got to see him. I liked that we got to see him as the as the full man. Uh, we got to see him as the the security guard, also the lovesick puppy, the kind of rejected puppy, and then the heartbroken adult who lost uh, someone that he really cared about and was worried about. You know. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 my, if we're bringing up things that we were super duper loved, Happy Hogan in that movie for me. I would just like to bring up that I want Andrew Garfield to hold me sweetly. That's yes. what I liked about it. I got to imagine Andrew Garfield holding me sweetly. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like just a quick thing i really like how like uh kevin feige redeemed electro like that was a big mm-hmm. thing for me yes. oh, yeah. like, jamie oh my Fox. god same. oh my god same dude jamie fox i think jamie fox was like one of my favorite parts of that movie exactly so like he got a little a little done dirty in amazing spider-man 2 so like yeah being his redemption was like 10 out of 10 for me but moon knight moving, moving on to the moon i loved yes. i loved getting moon by uh oscar isaac it was, it was a great period of my life oh, getting yeah. moon by that man he can move me anytime. Oscar <laughs> Isaac is just so incredible. I still, uh, the thing that I quote constantly is, I can't tell my waking life from dreams. And it's just, <laughs> his stu- like his stupid deliveries were so good. Yeah. In my opinion, I just loved him. And I loved the hippo. I loved hippo lady. Oh, yeah. Hot hot hippos i love Tawara, oh my her. god she was like she's such a sweetheart and like i want Dude, more of her she's just so adorable i want her in everything mm-hmm. <laughs> let her leave the duot and fight alongside the world's mightiest heroes <laughs> i agree but no like the show's overall handling of, of course like did and like you know egyptian mythology was like so great and i cannot wait for for more from season two when they finally introduce bushman Bushman's like a psycho. Like Bushman is truly this man's Joker. And like once they, I, I, I cannot wait to see who they cast as that. I really want them to cast Wayne Brady, but hey, that's just me. Because uh, Wayne Brady is such a good improv actor, and I feel like he'd do a great job. Oh, he's amazing. Let us move on over to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Oh. Doctor Strange too. Doctor Strange and the mom. And the mommy. Mommy, Dommy, she, Dommy, Mommy. She was, she was a mommy, for sure. <laughs> for sure. That was so good. The horror aspects. I mean, Sam Raimi just nails it every goddamn time. I I mean, the I loved you and like I've loved you in every universe is just like the most heartbreaking. Like that is the ultimate breakup. That is the ultimate breakup is finding out that she is going to dump your ass no matter what because you guys That's, are twin, You twin fumble in every universe. Yeah, you fumble, you fumble a bad <laughs> bitch in every universe. Like, that is so... <laughs> that's what that means. That's what he should have done. That's what he should... He should have held her face and gone, I fumbled a bad bitch in every universe. <laughs> it would have been just as impactful. I agree. Miss <laughs> Marvel, the queen herself, um, I really enjoyed this show. I think I think I think you're right. The coronation of Amon Vellani as the Queen of Marvel. 
Like it was like having a mini Spider-Man, like Spider-Man, uh, what do you call it? It's homecoming, but like a TV show of that. Like it just felt very like, I, I like seeing like the, the younger like heroes of the MCU just be kids and try to balance their, their superhero and work and, um, in normal life. Like, I feel like that's what we need more of the MCU. Um, but like, obviously like the villain wasn't great. I kind of wish the villain was stronger, but like overall that family, Amon's family, I mean, Amon's family, Kamala's family. Um, fantastic. And I, I want to see more of them all the time. Um, cause they're just wholesome people moving on to Thor love and thunder. Now I know mm. that this one was, uh, probably yeah. the, the nuts, not, 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 not the best Marvel thing that the Marvel has put out in, uh, the past 15 years or so. Um, but would you guys have something nice to say about Thor 4? Natalie Portman is really pretty. She is so beautiful. When she goes to Valhalla, she uh, two oh beautiful people it's hugging. Like, oh Heimdall and Natalie Portman, it's just two of the most beautiful people just on earth. Two of the most gorgeous people on earth just exchanging a snug. Oh, I yeah. loved it. Loved that. So yeah, that's what I I say we I say we quickly yeah. move on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, Thor four was a uh, was definitely a time. Um, she Hulk, attorney at law. Attorney at law. I love the twerking. I loved. It. I freaking I love, love She Hulk. Like I, I legit actually love She Hulk because it trolled all the incels. That's literally the only re- like not the biggest reason, not the only reason, but like it was it was a funny ass show. It was like a really just I just it's a parody of the MCU essentially, and it was just trolled all the incels on on Reddit and by literally producing a Reddit clone. And having that be a focal point of the series. Werewolf by Night. Blood galore. Blood and in, in wolves and in, in gore. Galore. Yeah, I like yes. the gore. Uh, Elsa, Elsa Bloodstone, she was great. Liked her in that other, um, that uh, HBO show, The Nevers or The Never. Oh, was she in there? Yeah, something like that. The okay. Nevers? I've never heard the of that. The Nevers. I don't know. I don't ne- know. Is, is that about Peter Pan? The no. Never- yeah. Neverland. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird show about uh like it's like a steampunk show it's like about like steampunk. Oh, mm. cool, 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 the cool, future and the past connecting it kind of fell apart oh yeah the nevers i was right it's called the nevers i'm always right uh <laughs> the, it was created by joss whedon so it kind of fell apart when all the whedon stuff came about because he got oh. kicked out of the writer's room and then they attempted to do a second season and it just didn't connect Anyhow, gotcha. <laughs> Werewolf by Night, dude. I I really like. I just gotta say first, I loved. I loved the villain in Werewolf by Night. I thought she was terrifying. She was so scary, and like I loved that. I thought that. I thought she was great. Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. My goodness, what an emotional uh, movie. Emotional roller that coaster. That shit was I, like so. I have hard. cried every time I've watched it, and I have watched it for work. Like. 80,000 times and I will never it's just beautiful like the ending is so beautiful oh fuck it's so good the the entire process of that movie like the first trailer literally is probably one of the greatest trailers ever made and then like the the actual movie just how they handled um celebrating Chadwick Boseman and just like just allowing him to exist in the universe without like just being like all right he's dead recast him whatever like it was like a very great way for artists to grieve their their fellow artists that that left in like 10 out of 10 i i cannot have thought of a better way to to handle all that so finally we have the guardians of the galaxy holiday special i freaking love this freaking little thing we did not like we didn't have to have it but we got it it was so good it was like i ugh. can't believe the kevin oh my god the kevin bacon of it all i can't believe like yes of course they could like get him to do that like but it was still so surprising that they did it it was just oh i loved it my heart needed it and wanted it see that's how you do a Chekhov's kevin bacon learn from that loki learn from that because the Chekhov's jet ski now Never paid off. Chekhov's Kevin Bacon paid off in the most satisfying possible way. And like, sister and brother. Sister and yes. brother. It was so brother good to like finally have that confirmed. Because like after Guardians yeah. 2, people were like, are they related? Like, are, are they like brother and sister? What's going when on we, When we do the Palaxy uh, Christmas special, I'm going to reveal that MT and I are brothers. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> no spoilers. My God, why would you tell them? I don't care. <laughs> 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 but no like that like i really loved that whole special because like it just 
I, I like how like Disney or, or Marvel is like sort of giving us Christmas stuff every year now. Mm-hmm. Like in, in yeah. what if season two we're getting like another right. Christmas thing? Oh we're like, yeah. And by the way, I don't want to tease our pal because I'm not gonna reveal. I have a good idea for us guys that we'll talk about offline. Ooh. Teaser, te- teaser, teaser. It's gonna be a crowd yeah. pleaser. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, okay. MT and I fully were just like, oh shit, you know it would be really good. And we just started talking again. We just started talking about the outline at yeah. one point while you were gone. <laughs> we need you. We need help. We need you. Yes. We were just we- planning on online we were just fully in the podcast like yeah we should do this next week and now we're doing it baby now we're doing it all right we're back they're all the pals they're all we can include them in the process why not Uh, well i love all our pals and i'm so glad to be back but my throat is attacking me from the inside so i'm gonna say i believe it this best old boy is out for this galaxy I love you all so much. Dude, we love you and we love our pals. Yes. Thank you guys all for watching us like talk about all of our favorite parts of phase four. Talk about our thoughts about Loki and the Marvels. You guys are wonderful. You can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter if you guys want to see me post some weird shit. You can follow Whitney at Whitney Puppy on Twitter and at Whitney Vision on YouTube. Like Whitney Vision is putting out some really great stuff. You can follow Tommy Bechtold at Tommy Bechtold on Twitter um, and um, have a drink with me, his new podcast. Like that is yes. going on. It's fantastic. We love you guys so much. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Gang, gang.